Well, hello. Spirit has led me to a little word today, and uh, a lot. And a lot of it's when I thought I was properly examining myself, and I wasn't in every area that I should. Where I thought I was growing into humility, and yet I wasn't as humble as I thought. Where I thought I put my full trust in God. And yet, there are areas where he showed I am still not trusting. Where I have preached about not becoming puffed up in knowledge. And yet, treating the other person as if they are. When me not being listening to them. Or, or hearing them showed that I myself still struggled. There are many things that I learned about myself through others. And many of us can too. And I'm going to get into uh, how I've learned through my family, um, my wife and my children. And I'm still learning, and I'm not putting everything on here. But the first is with my spouse. When uh, I was first growing in Christ, learning and growing, and she struggled. And I talked to her and said, you should understand, you should be living into this, right? James one twenty two. but be doers of the word. And not hearers, only deceiving yourself. The way I was speaking, my actions were equal to what I thought she needed to be. See, we, we bite and devour one another, and that left something lodged in her that kept telling her she was not good enough because I tried to speak what I did not fully understand. That when I forgot that it took Christ to get me there. And it took surrender. And some people struggle with that. And instead of helping walking along that path, it's, it's rather devouring her that she's not there yet. And I've grown from that. But we can fall into that struggle. We want people to know something ahead of their time to know it. And we don't spend the time praying for them to grow into that understanding. Romans 15.1 says, We then that are strong ought to bear the affirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written aforetime for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures may have hope. See what we learn today. It, it, it is not uh, about to please ourselves, to analyze, look how good I am in comparison to them, but rather to learn, if you have grown strong, to learn how to raise up the weak without looking down at where they're at, but that you have understanding that we are all having different spiritual gifts and different areas of struggles that we need to overcome. And... We need to speak, not, not for ourselves, to, to please our neighbor and to their good edification. We should serve in a way that I am not showing them this side of me, which just devours them for what they don't understand, but that I am learning to be patient and, and comfort them. For Christ did not please himself, but... He took the reproaches, they fell on him. He became a slave, 
and he was beaten to make us whole. It is written for our patience and our comfort and our learning through through the scripture. And you can see throughout, you know, the churches in the New Testament, how Paul struggled with the Corinthians. Where he wrote three letters to them and possibly had to come see them a third time because they were still rebelling. And yet he was still patient with them and still comforted them. A new... In due time, as, as you prayed over them, that they can understand the scriptures for the sake of having hope. Now, my son Hezekiah, there was times where I proclaimed with my confession that I trusted God completely with my children, with my family, with everything else. And yet, when he was premature, I was like, no, that you can't keep the, the child. He has to stay with me. Only in my hands is he safe. That destroyed my confession. Did I not trust God? No matter where they are, did I not trust God? Here, we need to understand that our faith, and he can shake things up to show that our faith does not line up with our proclamation. You know, gee, his apostles, they cried out when he did a teaching, increase our faith. And that, and that should be the heart of our cry always, increase our faith. We need to be honest with where we are, are in our walk. And then the second thing that I learned with Hezekiah is this. That there was times, or there will be three things that I'm going to share with Hezekiah. There's times where he was constantly itchy, right? Because he had really bad eczema at that time. And the more he was thinking about, you know, the itchiness the eczema, the problem. The more first he made it worse, and the more he could not recognize that the cure was right in front of him. The thing to calm him was right there. Even the nourishment, who wasn't even focused on the nourishment that he also desired. Because he was fixated on the problem. And another thing. Matthew 6, 7. When, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. See, there's times where my child will wake up and he's crying and crying and crying for a bottle. And that bottle is set right in front of him. Yet, I was preparing him and cleaning him up. He did not know. He was, he was grumbling and, and, and fighting and weeping for that nourishment, for that bottle. Because I knew what he needed. And it was right in my hand. But what he didn't know. You know I was cleaning him up. I was getting all the stuff off of him. Getting him in fresh new clothing. Getting him prepped. Even when he was crying when I was preparing the bottle. I knew what he needed. And it's learning the patience. That God is bringing it in his timing. But there are other things that, that are being built around that. And then he'll give it to you. Now. With Nehemiah. I've noticed. And this is something I've learned. Through him. His name means God comforts. And I didn't fully understand why God gave him that name. Well, he's teaching us to cling to his comfort 
as we grew, which we did not always follow that. But also with Nehemiah, when he was born in the hospital the first day, he heard the voice that the pastor had out the, at the time, and he rolled over to, to, to look at him in the face. And he always had a hunger and a thirst for the scripture and was comforted in them. I'd pray over him. I did different things for him. And he used to crawl in the bed, uh, wake up in the morning and crawl and, and, and be held by his father. And then eventually he stopped as he grew. And then he started get, clinging to the things of this world. See, his name, full name, means God comforts he who grasps to heal. When you surrender yourself fully unto him and you and you surrender in all your ways. See, Nehemiah, he's reading scripture. He loves to sing about Jesus and talk about Jesus. But when he gets focused on the things of this world, that's when his attitude and his grumbling and even I've noticed bad dreams happen because he is not seeking God for his full comfort. When he turns to other things and devices for coping skills, and I've noticed this more often that he is doing so, relying on two things for coping. And that's the less time that he desires to read the scripture. Less time that he desires to pray before bed. And more times that he seems tormented through his sleep. See, we need to cling to God and his comfort in all things. And we need to recognize when we are focused on the things of this life, of the things of this earth, is is the less God's comfort is surrounding us. We, because he sees our heart that it's clinging to this world, the things of this world. And he's like, all right, for the time, if you think that's better for you, all right, so be it. I will show you what happens when you make that your comfort. Then come back to me. And I'll show you what it's like when you make me your comfort. Second, Second Corinthians 1 says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounded by, by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast, knowing that as you be partakers of the sufferings, you shall, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, and so much that we despaired even life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from a great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. So we see here, the more we rely on our own devices, our own understanding, the more that we will fall into that sentence of death. And yet, 
God brings things that are beyond our measure that we would despair even of life so that we learn to trust in God, that we learn to make Him our comfort. And when we do so, we can learn how to comfort others through the same sufferings and show the comfort that God has given us. But when we start to cling to the things of this earth, we start to lose that comfort. Just like Peter walking on the water. He saw Jesus. And he was walking on it. But then he saw the storm. And he started to drown. See. We are told. In James. I'm not sure where. Our first John. Well, I don't know exactly where it is. Um, 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 um. So, it speaks that the people of this world live for the pleasures and the desire, the vices, and and. Uh, Acknowledgement. And when we do that. Well I'll just read verse 14. It says. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world. The love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. And the lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. Is not of the father. But is of the world. And the world passeth away. And the lust thereof. But he that doeth, doeth the will of God. Abideth forever. Okay I read right into it. I didn't know where it was. I just saw something that would sound similar. And I went with it. And that's what I meant to read. So. We need to start seeking the will of God. And to be comforted in the things of him. And as we read earlier. That we gain patience and comfort through the scriptures. That guides into hope. No, one, no matter what we're struggling with. Whether it be night terrors. Whether it be just anxieties. Hungers. Thirst. As we go to the comfort of God. And start to die of the comfort of the world. We will start to have peace and hope. We have to change our perspective on things. And uh, allow your mind to continuously grow. I probably didn't say many of these things as I probably thought of when I first, you know, encountered them. Nor did I write this, but hopefully as it was put together, um, it would impact y'all. And uh, learn, look to learn how you truly are in Christ and what your walk is truly like by watching how you engage with each person. Learn to examine yourself and everything you do. And... Learn from even the child who does not have full understanding on how to live yet. They don't know right from wrong. And they're still on this journey. And in Christ, we are the same way. We constantly lead into this destruction. Because in Christ, we know not. New in Christ, we know not yet what is actually devouring us. So uh, keep your eyes on him, the author and perfecter of your faith. God bless y'all. Love y'all. Have a good day. Honey. Yarn. Hurt and the light. Coming ways.
have a second. Cut up with whatever I want. Tell you even if the peach and the cookies is made different. Jesus, then the one we or a different kind of spirit, then the one you then or a different kind of couple than the one you believed. Good job, Nehemiah.